Hello and welcome, Chef Pennington here. Today we are doing banana bread coffee cake with a cream cheese stuffing. This is one of the most delicious things ever and it just kind of happened by accident. I was sitting around thinking one day and was like, how do we make banana bread better? So here we go, guys. We're going to start with some all-purpose flour. We're going to get that in the bowl. We're going to add some salt. We like salt. It brings flavor out. We're going to get some baking powder, which is one of our leavening agents. It's going to help the cake not be dense. It's going to give it a little bit of that airiness. And then our baking soda. Always remember, though, baking soda is five times the leavening power of baking powder. That's a good one to know, guys. So we're going to use really high-quality cinnamon. Saigong from Vietnam is the best cinnamon in the world. So if you guys are able to find that, I would really highly suggest it. It's, more, it's just more fragrance. It's amazing. And the brand I'm using is Penzi, so look them up. The guys, they're just amazing stuff. So we got our dry done. High-quality butter. Please use high-quality butter. I happen to like Kerrygold. A lot of you will probably know that by now. Um, so that's a half a cup or eight ounces. We're going to get some sugar in there. And we're going to use two eggs, and we're going to add one extra egg yolk. Real important. That's going to add just a more moist cake. Really important stuff. I usually use my usual you know, KitchenAid mixer, but this time I pulled out my hand mixer and I got to say it was pretty doggone easy to use. That bowl has really high sides. That's something else to consider so that the flour doesn't just want to go everywhere on you. And a key ingredient there, guys, sour cream. We're using sugar and sweet elements like the banana. So it just rounds out all the flavors and it does create a more moist cake. So really cool ingredient. So let's say you don't have your bananas ready. We can throw them in the oven at 300 degrees for 30 minutes and they're perfect they don't need to sit on the counter promise you won't miss it one bit so these are still hot you could cool them off but the reason i like doing it when they're still warm is they're easier to incorporate into the batter if they become room temperature they get firm again so that's something to think about so we're getting nice and smooth there we don't want any of the banana lumps so it's okay to beat that a little bit more when we add the flour though we want to make sure that we don't over mix it I use some walnuts there. I like walnuts in this case because they're softer to the tooth. So when you bite, it's not like big old nut in the middle of your bread. But pecans work really nice too. They're very similar. So don't overwork the batter and let's make the amazing cream cheese stuffing. It's amazing and easy and anything that's <laughs> amazing and easy is great. So eight ounce packet of cream cheese, some sugar. And here's the trick. We're going to take some of the batter and get it in there. And this is going to help the, the, the stuffing have support for the cake. If we just put the cream cheese in there, it might want to ooze out and the cake would not look even when we're done cooking it. So adding the batter in there gives it support. So that's a really cool thing to think about. So we're going to get our pan ready. So I'm using a spring form. That's what the recipe for. You guys could put in, I don't know, whatever you guys like, really honestly test. It could work on a regular loaf pan too. You're just going to have extra batter. So I've got a big old tablespoon of flour in there. This is just going to help the cake not stick when we remove it from the spring form. So try to cover everything. It just makes your life that much easier in the end. Plus the presentation is going to be nicer. You'll see that when we take the spring form edge off uh, the beautiful presentation that it offers. So when you're putting the batter in, go ahead and make a thicker layer at the bottom. Because then we're going to put our cream cheese spread on the next level. So you want that a little closer to the top. It looks a little nicer than just dead in the middle. So when you're smoothing this out, try not to work it all the way to the edge so that whenever the cake is on, a, you know, once it's out and we've got it presented, you won't see the cream cheese layer around the edges. So just don't work it all the way to the edge. You can get real close though. You can see I got real close without quite being there. And then use the, all the rest of your batter and try to smooth it out where you don't see too much of the cream cheese. If you see a little, no problem. So we're making a coffee cake. The streusel is like the best part, isn't it? That part that's got that little bit of brown sugar, crispy, crunchy little bitty bits. It's always the best part in my opinion. Some more cinnamon. This is one area you could use as much as you guys like. Um, I'm getting like two heaping tables, teaspoons in there. Use high quality butter always. And you don't want to pulse this into oblivion. <clears throat> You want to get it to where the butter is still discernible. You can still see it, but it's it's come, it's not quite fine sand. You know those little bits of texture there. That's the butter, and that's what you want to see. So that's important. 
And then when it comes to adding it on, you guys can use as little as, or as much as you want. I think more is better than not is because who doesn't love that part? But if, if you use too much, then when you cut the cake, it's just going to fall off. So there's a happy medium there. And in the instructions, which will be below in the link, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I use. So we're going to go about an hour at 350. That's the key. And let's take a look what we got. Wow. That's all I can say. This this cake did not last long. <laughs> I went and shared some with my, my mother and father and a couple of my friends, and I wish I would made two of them. So this is how we check the doneness. Just make sure that it comes out clean. Make sure you stick close to the bottom because the bottom is where the raw part would be. And let's take it out of its spring form. So this is where you didn't want the cream cheese to go all the way to the edge. And you'll be able to see it here that there's no, there's no white edges there. So that's pretty... It's up to you. Maybe you want that, you know, but um, if you want it to look like that. Just think of that when you're making your cream cheese layer. It doesn't go too far to the edge. Let's get it on a nice looking platter. Now you could put some parchment underneath this when we ice the cake so that your presenting tray doesn't look bad and you can just pull it out when it's done or you could take smaller pieces around and just pull each one out when you're done. I think the icing kind of looks nice because um, I'm using glass, so it's not as noticeable that there's icing on the actual tray or the plate. So you want to use two lemons and then you want to work in as much lemon juice as you want so that you can control how thick or thin your, your icing is going to be. So here's what I like to do. I like to go from the middle out. It creates a really nice looking design, but even furthermore, think about it. When you cut your cake, the middle part of this cake is the first bite you're going to eat. So what, when going this way, you're going to end up with more icing in the middle, as you'll see here. So when you take your first bite, it's going to be one of those pieces from the middle with all the icing. So that's totally cool. And there you guys have it. Banana bread coffee cake with a cream cheese stuffing. I really hope you guys try this and come back and let me know what you guys thought. Join us on social media. We'd love to have you. Go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button. All the instructions, all the measurements will be in the link below. And you guys have the best. Take care.